So students, now solutions, lecture 3. Let's see the lecture 3 now. So boiling point elevation, the next colligative property. The boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid is equal to the external pressure. So generally for liquids it is the atmospheric pressure. It is found that the boiling point of a solution containing a non-volatile solute is higher than the boiling point of the pure solvent. So uh, let's say Tb0 is the boiling point of the pure solvent. So Tb is the boiling point of the solution. So Tb is going to be less than Tb0. Okay. So let's see this graph. In this the vapor pressure graph is between vapor pressure and the temperature. So if you solvent vapor pressure is here. When you increase temperature the vapor pressure increases and it starts boiling when vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Okay. If you see the solution, solution vapor pressure is lower than the solvent vapor pressure. You start heating. This also boils at the temperature when uh, pressure, vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So solvent boils at Tb0 temperature and uh, solution boils at Tb temperature. So Tb temperature is higher than Tb0. And the difference in this temperature is called delta Tb, uh, delta Tb and that is called the elevation in boiling point. Okay, so the horizontal line at, at one atmospheric pressure intersects the curves at the respective boiling point and this result, the result can be understood by the fact that since P1 is less than P1 naught, the solution will be heated at a higher temperature. Okay, to reach, a, to reach a higher vapor pressure of one atmosphere in the boiling point. So I hope the graph is clear. Okay, now, so boiling point elevation and concentration of solute molality okay so how are they related experimentally and thermodynamically delta tb is directly proportional to the concentration of the solution for dilute solution that is the molality of the solution so delta tb is equal directly proportional to m or delta tb is equal to kbm so why do we write kb here kb is a proportionality constant and this m is a molality of the solution kb is a proportionality constant which is also called abelioscopic constant or molal boiling point elevation constant. So how do you define it? When m is equal to 1, delta Tb is equal to Kb. So Kb is the boiling point elevation produced by one molar solution. And the unit of Kb is Kelvin kg per mole. Is that clear? Okay. So that's how delta Tb and m are related. So molar mass of solute can be calculated using this elevation in boiling point. Delta Tb is equal to Kbm. If W2 of a solute is molar mass of a solute is M2, weight of the solute is W2, is dissolved in W1 grams of solvent having molar mass M1 to prepare a solution, then moles of the solute N2 is equal to W2 upon M2. And mass of the solvent W1 grams is equal to W1 upon 1000 kg. So molality is equal to M is equal to moles of solute present in mass of solvent in kg. So, M is equal to W2 upon M2 divided by W1 upon 1000. M is equal to 1000 W2 upon M2 W1. So, delta Tb is equal to Kb into 1000 W2 upon M2 W1. Okay. Or we can say M2 equals to 1000 Kb W2 upon delta Tb W1. So, this is how the molar mass of the solute can be calculated using the elevation in boiling point. Let's see a numerical. Boiling point of water at 750 millimeter mercury is 99.63 degrees centigrade. How much sucrose is to be added to 500 grams of water such that it boils at 100 degrees centigrade? Okay. So, Tb is given and Tb naught is given. So, 100 minus 96.63 will give you 3.37 degrees. Mass of water is given to 500 grams. Mass of molar mass of water is 18 grams per mole. Then molar mass of sucrose is C12H2211 is 342 grams per mole. Mass of sucrose can be calculated. So we know the formula delta Tb is equal to Kbm. So Kb is equal into W2 upon M2 into 1000 upon W1. 1000 upon W1. So W2 is equal to M2 W1 delta Tb upon 1000 into Kb. 342 into 500 into 3.37 upon 1000 into 0.52. This comes out to be 1108.2 or 1.11 kg.
Is this clear? Very simple question. The two temperatures are given. You find out delta T. And then mass of water is given. Mass of sucrose is asked. And molecular mass you already know. Okay, so this is how it has to be calculated. Then the freezing point depression. What is freezing point? Freezing point is the temperature at which the liquid and solid are in equilibrium. Okay, it is found that freezing point of a solution containing a non volatile solute is lower than that of a pure solvent. So let's say Tf0 is the freezing point of a pure solvent and Tf is the freezing point of the solution. And Tf0 is going to be greater than Tf. So delta Tf is equal to Tf0 minus Tf. So freezing point depression is a consequence of lowering of vapor pressure. Clear? Now let's see the graph. Here in the graph you see A, B, C, D. So D to B is the uh, liquid solvent. When and uh, A, B is the solid solvent. So when liquid and solid are in equilibrium, that point is a freezing point. Okay, so of pure solvent. Then solution, we all know the vapor pressure is less. So they will, uh, the there the vapor pressure of the uh, liquid and solid will be at equilibrium at a lower temperature. So that is called depression in freezing point. The temperature has reduced. And this difference is called delta Tf, that is depression in freezing point. Right? So where the liquid and solid solvents meet, that point is called uh, the freezing point where the vapor pressure is seen. This graph is between vapor pressure and temperature. Yeah. Okay. Now, so that's what we did in the graph. Now, uh, so here again, how is the delta Tf related to molarity concentration? Delta Tf is equal to Kfm. Okay. What is Kf? Kf is a constant. This is called cryoscopic constant, or also we call it as molar freezing point depression constant. When m equals to 1, delta Tf is equal to Kf. So, how do you define Kf? Kf is the freezing point depression produced by one molar solution of non-volatile solute. And its units are what? The same units, Kelvin kg per mole. Right? Okay. Now, how will you calculate the molar mass of the solute using depression in freezing point? My formula is delta Tf is equal to Kfm. W2 grams of solute having molar mass m2 is dissolved in W1 grams of solvent having molar mass W1. So to prepare a solution. So then moles of the solute will N2 equal to W2 upon M2. Mass of the solvent equals to W1 grams that is equal to W1 by 1000 kg. So molality will be what? Moles of solute upon mass of solvent in kg. So W2 by M2 upon W1 by 1000 that is equal to 1000 W2 upon M2 W1 moles per kg. Now, delta Tf equal to Kf into 1000 W2 upon M2 into W1. Or M2 is equal to 1000 Kf into 1000 Kf into W2 upon delta Tf or W1. Right? So that's how you can calculate the molar mass of the solute using depression in freezing point. Right? Okay. Let's see a question. Calculate the mass of ascorbic acid. To be dissolved in 75 grams of acetic acid to lower its melting point by 1.5 degree centigrade. The Kf for acetic acid is 3.9 Kelvin kg per mole. Okay. So what's my formula? Wp is equal to mv into delta Tf Wa upon Kf. What is mass of the acetic acid? 75 grams. That is equal to 0 0.075 kg. Then depression in freezing point is 1.5 degree centigrade or 1.5 Kelvin. Anything we can say. Molar mass of ascorbic acid, the formula is C6H8O6. It comes out to be 176 grams per mole. Kf is given in the question 3.9. You have to calculate WP, WB. So, WB is equal to MV 1.5 into 0.075 upon 3.9 Kelvin kg per mole. So, all are in kg and this one is in grams. So, my answer will be in gram 5.08 grams. Okay, is this clear? Okay. Now the next colligative property is osmotic pressure. What is osmotic pressure? So it is a colligative property used to determine molecular mass of solutes by the phenomena of osmosis. Now you should know what is osmosis. So when a solution and a pure solvent of two solutions are 
different concentrations are separated by a semi permeable membrane the membrane which allows only certain particles to pass through so uh, membrane the solvent molecules pass through the membrane in both directions the solute cannot pass through but solvent can pass through now this semi permeable membrane is made up of animal bladder or copper ferricyanide chemical okay so since vapor pressure of the solvent is greater than that of the solution the net direction of flow is from solvent to solution okay vapor pressure of the solution is less solvent is more so solvent flows from solvent to solution so as a result the amount of liquid on solvent side or more dilute solution side decreases and increases on the other side thus the solution concentration tends to equalize on both the sides the vapor pressure becomes equal on both the sides so net spontaneous flow of solvent into the solution from dilute solution to concentrated solution through a semi permeable membrane is called osmosis so semi permeable membrane is a membrane which has got pore size that allows only small molecules to pass through and not the big molecules so it allows the solvent molecules to pass through not the uh, solute molecules so it has uh, generally a solvent water molecules are small in size and can pass easily solute molecules are big in size they cannot pass example cellophane membrane animal bladder etc okay so this is the experiment to determine among other osmotic pressure this is a semi permeable membrane this is outside one is solvent inside is solution so solvent flows into the solution and the uh, the it flows into the solution in the cell, uh, t cell funnel and the level of the solution increases hmm? now the pressure required to stop more, so additional pressure is seen here because of the height of the solution and is calculated by h d g h rho g h is the height of the solution rho is the density and g is the gravitational acceleration okay so that's how the osmotic pressure is calculated so basically it is also defined as the pressure uh, that helps to stop osmosis so in the above setup the more concentrated solution is kept inside the t cell funnel and it is held up by semi permeable membrane tied on the mouth and this part is immersed in the container containing pure water and the solvent molecules pass in both the direction through the membrane but the net flow is into the t cell funnel as it contains dilute solution so the liquid level rises to equalize the osmotic pressure eventually when the height of the liquid wall column reaches a certain value the net flow stops so this is because the rate of forward and the reverse pa uh, passages are equal so at equilibrium point what happens the hydrostatic pressure is attained and the hydrostatic pressure has stopped osmosis so this hydrostatic pressure is given by the formula h rho g where h is the height of the liquid liquid column rho is the density of the solution and g is acceleration due to gravity okay so basically the pressure that uh, is applied on the solution to stop osmosis is called osmotic pressure and it is represented by pi so if the two or more solution have same osmotic pressure they are called isotonic if the their one is having higher and another has having uh, lesser than that so if two solutions have unequal osmotic pressure and the more concentrated one is having higher and is called hypertonic solution so hypertonic solution if the two solutions have unequal osmotic pressure and the lower osmotic pressure solution is called hypotonic solution okay so this osmotic pressure is represented by pi and is given by the formula n2 rtv okay n2 is the number of moles of the normally volatile solute v is the volume in dm cube r is the gas constant t is the temperature in kelvin the value of gas constant is 0.08206 decimeter cube at a atmosphere per kelvin per mole okay then this is also written by pi is equal to mrt where m is the molarity not molality now molarity that is it is basically the concentration of the solution and rt is uh, the r is gas constant and t is the temperature in kelvin okay so hence it can be expressed in molarity and not molarity okay okay so my formula for the uh, osmotic pressure is what pi is equal to n2 rt by v 
molar mass of the solute uh, how can we calculate using this formula n2 we all know is the number of moles which is equal to w2 upon m2 the weight of the mass of the solute upon molecular mass so equation becomes pi is equal to w2 upon m2 rt upon v so my formula is m2 is equal to w2 rt upon pi v Calculate the osmotic pressure in pascals exerted by a solution prepared by dissolving 1 gram of polymer of molar mass 185,000 in 450 ml. Okay, so my concentration is what? 1 gram in 18500 grams per mole. Then R uh, is 8.314. Then volume is 0.45 liters. So putting all these values, you get 30.96. Pascals. Okay, so 8.314 is a unit in kilo pascals converted into pascals liter per Kelvin per mole into 310. So putting the value of n, n is what? W upon m. So W is given as 1 grams, m is 185,000 into R, R is 8.314 into 10 to the power of 3 pascal liters per Kelvin per mole. Temperature is 37 degrees centigrade. That is equal to 310 Kelvin. Okay. And volume is 4.45 liters. So 1 upon 0.45 is equal to 30.96 pascals. So that's how you can calculate the pressure or any one of the thing is given. Others are asked. Other is asked. You can calculate using this formula. Right. Okay. Now reverse osmosis. So, let's say we have uh, fresh water on one side, salt on another side. Fresh water is a pure solvent, salt water is a solution. So, for initially what will happen, the fresh water will flow from the pure solvent to the solution. The rise level will rise. Okay. Now, if you have to stop this osmosis, what will we do? We will apply a pressure on this side of the solution and at a, at a point the osmosis will stop. Okay, now if I apply excess pressure, what will happen? The water will flow from salt water to fresh water. So that is called reverse osmosis. Okay, the extra pressure, when the extra pressure is applied on the solution to do the reverse process from the solution, solvent moves from uh, salt water to fresh water, then it is called reverse osmosis. So in the above setup, reverse osmosis, when a pressure larger than osmotic pressure, is applied on the piston on the hypertonic side water flows from hypertonic side to the hypotonic side that is the water flows from pure water flows from salt water to fresh water side so such a process involves energy required to push the piston and work has to be done to drive the process which is non spontaneous so thus direction of osmosis is reversed at the expense of external energy the pure water is obtained so this colligative property of electro osmosis is used in purifying water okay so this we already read this question now colligative properties of the uh, electrolyte so what we did, what did we study till now we studied about the colligative properties of non electrolytes due to different behavior of electrolytes they do not give the correct results the way which they are different is solutions of electrolytes also exhibit colligative properties which do not obey the relations of followed by the uh, non electrolytes colligative properties of solution of electrolytes are greater than those expected and the molar mass of I, uh, is determined by either colligative relations are considerably lower so the reason for the difference in behavior in the electrolytes than from the non-electrolyte is either they undergo dissociation. Okay. That means they dissociate into ions. So, in other words, one formula unit of electrolytes produces more ions. For example, if I take 0.1 m NaCl, it will produce two ions. So, if I take 0.1 m sucrose, it produces no ion. So, the value of colligative property will become double for NaCl than for sucrose. So, when you are taking an electrolyte, the colligative properties behave differently. Their values increase. To obtain the colligative properties of the electrolyte solution using of non-electrolytes, Venthoff suggested a factor. 
which is defined as the ratio of colligative property of a solution of an electrolyte to the same of the non electrolyte let's see how children now is represented by small i band of fact so to explain the deviation in the colligative properties of the electrolyte and non electrolyte Wenthoff suggested a factor called Wenthoff factor, which is represented by a small i. That is equal to colligative property of an electrolytic solution upon same colligative property of a non-electrolyte solution. So the ratio between two uh, gives you the value of i. So i is equal to delta T F upon T F naught is equal to delta T B upon T B naught, delta P upon P naught, pi upon pi naught. So this ratio will give you the i. This ratio of the colligative property of the electrolyte solution to the colligative property of the non electrolyte solution or also it can be calculated by dividing actual moles of particles in solution after dissociation upon the moles of formula unit dissolved in the solution so if it is nacl after moles will be 2 and before moles will be 1 so i will be 2 or is it is equal to the formula mass of the substance upon observed molecular mass that is m theoretical upon m observed Let's say the molecular mass observed is uh, 23, theoretical is 23 and observed is 46. So, I becomes half. Okay. So, that's how we can calculate I. So, thus I is equal to 1 for non-electrolytes, 2 for NaCl, 3 for MgCl2 depending on the ions they produce on dissociation. Okay. So, the above conclusions are valid only for infinitely very very dilute solutions in reality especially at higher concentration the colligative property of strong electrolytes and their i values are usually smaller than expected due to reduction in the number of particles by formation of ion pairs due to electrostatic attraction okay so for weak electrolytes how do you calculate the degree of dissociation let's see uh, Vanta factor I and degree of dissociation alpha. So let's take a salt AX BY. When I prepare a dilute solution, it dissociates into X AY plus and Y B plus X plus. So let's say initially the number of moles of uh, the salt is 1 and the dissociated ions are 0 moles. At equilibrium, let's say alpha amount of this solute uh, dissolves to give you X alpha of a and x y alpha of b okay so my total number of moles after dissociation would be what 1 minus alpha plus x alpha plus y alpha or we can say 1 plus alpha x plus y minus 1 or 1 plus alpha into n minus 1 okay if x plus y are together taken in the number of moles and we uh, call it as n is equal to x plus y then we can replace x plus y with n so, 1 plus alpha n minus 1. Okay. So, I is equal to actual number of moles after dissociation upon moles of the formula units in solution. So, it becomes 1 plus alpha into n minus 1 upon 1. This alpha is equal to I minus 1 upon n minus 1. Very important formula. Okay. So, when the solute undergoes dissociation, then this is how the I can be calculated if the degree of dissociation and the number of moles is known to us. Okay. Let's, let's do a question on this. At 25 degrees centigrade, 0.1 molal acetic acid is 1.35% dissociated in an aqua solution. Calculate freezing point osmotic pressure of the solution, assuming molality molarity to be identical. So, molality is 0.1 molal. Degree of dissociation is 1.35%. Okay, so alpha is equal to I minus 1 upon N minus 1, so 0 0.0135 equals to I minus 1 upon 2 minus 1. Hmm? How 2 minus 1? Because acetic acid dissolves to produce acetate ions and H plus ions. So 2 ions, so 2 minus 1. I is equal to 0 0.0135 plus 1, 1.0135. Okay, so T delta TF equals to I. 1.0135 into 1.86 into 0.1 gives you 0.186 degrees centigrade. Pi is equal to what? I M R T. 1.0135 is the I. 0.1 is the concentration. R is 0.082 and 298. So 2.48 atmosphere. 
So the freezing point of the solution is minus 0 0.189 degrees centigrade and osmotic pressure is 2.48 atmospheres. This is clear. Now osmotic pressure of calcium chloride and urea solution of the same concentration at same temperature are 0 0.605 and 0 0.245 atmospheres. Calculate the Van Hoff factor for CaCl2. Okay. So pi CaCl2 is, is uh, 605. Pi urea is 0.245. Okay. Same concentration that means they are isotonic. Okay. So I is equal to pi upon pi naught. That is 0 0.605 upon 0.245 that is 2.47. So Venter factor for calcium chloride is 2.47. Okay. Urea will be 1. Urea is a non-electrolyte. Now, 5% solution of cane sugar in water has freezing point which is 231 Kelvin. Calculate the freezing point of 5% glucose solution if freezing point of pure water is 273.15. Now, molar mass of sugar you all know 342 grams. Molality of the sugar solution will be 5 upon 342 into 100 upon 1000. Why into 100? Because 5% solution. So, the um, mass of the solution is 100. So, this comes to be 0.146 moles m small m moles per kg. Then delta Tf is equal to 273.15 minus 271 is equal to 2.15 degree. So, delta Tf is equal to Kfm. M is known to uh, delta Tf is known. So, Kf can be calculated. Okay. So, Kf is equal to this. 2.15 upon 0.146. Now, molality of the glucose solution is 5 by 180 into 1000 by uh, 100 is equal to 0.278. Now, delta Tf is equal to Kfm 2.15 upon 0.146 into 2.78. That comes out to be 4.09 degrees centigrade. Okay. So, delta Tf is 4.09. So, freezing point of glucose solution is what? Tf naught minus uh, delta Tf will give you the delta Tf will give you the Tf of the glucose solution. So, 269.06. Is this clear? Okay. Now, determine the osmotic pressure of solution prepared by dissolving 25 milligrams of potassium sulfate in 2 liters of water at 25 degrees centigrade. Assuming completely dissociated. Now, when it is completely dissociated, then you can calculate I K2SO4, 2K plus plus sulfate. So, how many ions it is producing? 2 plus 1, 3. So, completely dissociated means I is equal going to be 3. So, number of uh, this one is equal going to be 3. I is going to be 3. Now, alpha, uh, alpha is equal to I minus 1 upon N minus 1. Alpha for complete dissociation is equal to 1. N is equal to 3. So, uh, alpha is equal to I minus 1 upon N minus 1. So, this is uh, I minus 1 upon N minus 1 is coming to 1. Na? So, uh, the number of ions I is equal to 2 plus 1 that is 3. Okay. Calculate the osmotic pressure. I Osmotic pressure is equal to I C R T. C is what molarity. Okay. So, uh, I you know 3. Then WB mass of the solute is 0 0.025, R is 0 0.0821, temperature is 298, MB is 174 and volume is 2 liters. So you can calculate R pi 5.278 to 20 to the power of minus 3. Clear? Why we took this as 0 0.025? Because it was given 25 milligrams here. We converted that into grams. Clear?